You've heard it from everybody. Your parents, your teachers, and maybe even some of your friends. School is super important for you, they say. Without proper education and effort, you won't make it in life. Look, I get it. You guys will probably graduate thinking that you've just been through 13 years of getting assignments done last minute, studying late nights, and wasting your lives being enclosed in a tiny room where we're expected to pay attention for more than an hour. I know, crazy, right? And all of this just for a piece of paper signed by your school. Sometimes it's even delivered in a nice little frame. After this, though, we can forget all about physics, Newton's laws, and the diameters, and get straight into the important stuff. Pursuing a career, buying a house, providing for a family, and making lifelong friends. Pretty simple, right? Yet, here's the catch. Sometimes the twigs in the tree are truly the reason why the apples come out. Today, I'm here to speak about how we as an international or global community must cherish the opportunities that our schools give us and use our advantages locally. Let's continue. Hold on. You might be wondering why I'm here today. Who am I to speak about international schools? Well, my name is Eduardo Diaz, and I have studied at international schools for sev over seven years. I first attended the American School of Doha in Qatar, where I spent six of those years. I, n I then moved to China, where I'm now attending my second year here at AISG. Prior to moving abroad, I lived a small portion of my life in a domestic preschool in the United States, and I currently have a good number of friends that attend the public school system there. Therefore, I think I have a good view of both sides of the equation. Why don't we start with the basics? Here are a school's respective definitions. An international school is a school that instructs a curriculum separate from its host countries. It ha they have a multinational community and they promote a multicultural education, which all work together to promote world citizenship. On the other hand, domestic schools are schools that, ha that are teaching curri a curriculum from their host country. They can be public or private, yet usually their student bodies are largely similar. However, the most significant characteristic that really makes them domestic, though, is the fact that their communities have a common context and comparable background. All right, well, why did I just say this? Why is all of this important, then? To help us think, let's use a tool that I thought I'd never use outside of my science class, much less in a TED Talk, a Venn diagram. I want us to imagine a job interview here, where we have two candidates, Josh and Ben. They're both applying for an open spot at Apple. The company looks at their resumes and finds that for the most part, they could be the exact same person. They both have the exact same qualifications, age, and education. Speaking of which, they both even have the same, they both even spent most of their lives in a domestic public school in the United States. However, they had one small distinction. While Josh spent his entire life in that public school, Ben spent just his three middle school years studying abroad in Britain. Now, after the company saw this, do you think they considered things differently? Who do you think got the job? By the way, I just want to clarify, the company was not judging by their egos here. You're right, it's Ben. You might think that the small difference in the resumes is quite insignificant and couldn't change a job decision, but that's not true. It certainly can. So why is this true? Why is this such a key advantage in any job these days? This is what GoAbroad.com has to say about it. In an increasingly globalized world, employers are favoring candidates who are comfortable engaging with different cultures and people from different backgrounds. Navigating a new country, often in a foreign language, immersing yourself in a new culture and adapting to new, sh to new customs shows that you're resilient, respectful, and resourceful. Let's focus on those three last words for now. In my time living abroad, I've studied a couple of languages, and especially in China, using a different language other than Chinese to try to communicate in your everyday life is a significant challenge. And compared to English, Chinese is like the complete opposite. The struggle that this has given me to communicate has provided me with a unique experience of flexibility, which eventually leads to resilience. However, in the heat of the moment, if we can't seem to mutter out the right words, we can be resourceful and take out our phones to translate. Finally, with time, once we've learned the language and the culture behind it, we learn to finally respect the differences. 
Yes, international schools are well equipped to educate their communities on the tools needed to embrace and live your, the local culture. However, it's not just the schools that do this though. We also learn from our peers and classmates. According to the Harrow International School of Hong Kong, the student body of an international school is typically diverse, meaning that they gain exposure and experience from interacting with a wider variety of people. All right, we've talked about the views by companies and schools. However, the question can now be asked, what about the people who teach us these curriculums? The teachers, what do they think about an international, pers uh, an international experience? For this talk, I inter I've interviewed two teachers who both have highly international backgrounds. However, the way that they're using them in their lives today is quite different. We'll start with my lovely, amazing, and super kind sister, Miss Adriana Diaz, who, by the way, like definitely didn't make me say that. She went to domestic schools until eighth grade, when she moved to Qatar and spent her entire high school in an international school. Throughout her time there, she was gifted with the opportunity to see and live different world perspectives from her classmates' views. She is currently a junior at Baylor University in Texas, studying elementary education, and as she explores the ways of American public school teaching, she recognizes some key differences between the two school systems. When asked to reflect on those differences, she stated, the difference is that the diversity in domestic schools is so small compared to international schools. I went to a school that had over 86 nationalities represented, and it opened your eyes to a lot more cultures and countries that you would typically see as war countries. She recalled her Syrian friend from high school. Fortunately, Adriana was able, was able to be given the opportunity to see a perspective of the chaos and trouble from someone who had their, who had their family and country in hostility. She continued, you could see that side of the story rather than the side of the story that's on the news all the time. Adriana also emphasized how in US, especially in US public schools, the education curriculum could be a little influenced by politics and how international schools present a more neutral perspective and are respectful of their host country. Despite this restraint though, the students themselves aren't necessarily held back from sharing their views, which again is a key benefit. Today, she uses her wider perspective everywhere she goes, whether it's through teaching a second grade classroom or making lifelong friends. She mainly credits this ability to her international school. This shows us how our experiences that we will have will stay, that we have, stay, will stay with us for our entire lives. Now, let's look at another example. I introduced to you Mr. Ralph Emmerich, who is a teacher here at AISG. He is originally from the Netherlands and first taught abroad in Mexico. There, he met his wife, and he recalls us thinking back then by saying, quote, from there on, honestly, I really never looked back. They then together went to Xiamen in China and later moved to Guangzhou. When asked about what he thought about teaching abroad, he stated that he really appreciates the international, perspective that student, the international perspectives that students bring to the classroom, which eventually gives them a wider view of the world. However, he does recognize that he wouldn't get this back in the Netherlands if he'd be teaching there because most of, his school, most of his students would most likely be from a local neighborhood. He also said that he really appreciates an international staff, the international staff of an international school and what they bring from their own countries into the curriculum. For example, he says he brings his Dutchness into it and other teachers might have their ideas of how to assess kids or teach kids that is sometimes influenced by their background and history. However, he does return to the importance of the students by saying, the staff is something that I really appreciate, but even more so, the fact that I get to work with students from different parts of the world. I think that it's super cool that we have such a global atmosphere and our classroom's really small community. That's something that I really appreciate and cherish. Now let's take a pause here. If you think about it, so many global perspectives in, crammed into one classroom could cause a little havoc, right? Wrong. Mr. Emmerich again clarifies that it actually benefits the classroom if it's international because it allows him to express his country's views and manifestations while allowing the kids and the students to share their contrast to that. Mr. Emmerich finishes off by saying, everybody's equal, we're all part of the same school and the same community, but everybody's different at the same time as well. Everybody's unique.
Great, so now that we've established that the international ex experience that we've all been given is truly a gift, the question can now be asked, how can we tie the global to the local to get to the local? How can we accommodate our daily lives to really squeeze this sponge that international schools have given us and make the best out of every experience? Let's start by asking ourselves some questions about our own lives, specifically our friends. We'll start with three questions. Number one, who are your friends? What makes a friend a friend for you? Obviously, their personality and kindness are obvious factors, but what other things classify a person to complete your so-called friend must-have checklist? Do they have to be from a specific country, speak a certain language? Do they have to have a certain number of perhaps Instagram followers? Number two, where are your friends? Do you have friends that are currently in other cities, provinces, or living in other cities, co uh, countries, or, province, or provinces? If not, look inside your own community. Do you have friends that are from many other places? If so, how often do you talk to them? Do you perhaps let your differences separate you? Going back to my sister's interview and how, as a college student, she still appreciates every international friend that she was able to make. She says, quote, the friends that I can think of, they're all in different countries. One is in New York, the other one is in Australia, and the other one is in Canada. Again, a clear representation of a permanent opportunity presented to people of international communities. Finally, question number three. Do your friends think the same as you? Do your friends have different cultures, religions, or beliefs on the world? How well do you know these worldviews? Have you ever had a discussion about each other's perspectives? In this point of our lives, our minds are young and fresh, and this is the time to understand our community's ideas. Soon, if you haven't already, you'll be hit with an avalanche of world opinions, leaders to follow, and things to speak against. We must start by shortening that friend must have checklist, which expands our options to the maximum. Everyone we see and everything they do have something to teach us. Who knows, maybe the kid eating lunch all by himself will one day become the huge CEO of one company. Uh, the CEO of a huge company. I ask you passionately, let's use our multi-viewed advantage to make the change the world needs. Another way that we can apply our global advantage to our lives locally is to branch out of our international neighborhood. Yes, yes, I know. We just spent the past like 13 minutes discussing why we have to appreciate what happened inside that neighborhood, but we need to strike a balance. How good will we be if we just stay enclosed inside our international bubble, only taking away the international parts of other people? What about their local roots? What about the of part of our school names, our host country? Because of their diversity, in, international schools could be plotted pretty much anywhere around the globe, and they'd function the same inside. That wouldn't be that much fun to attend, would it? We must start by, it's, by tasting the local, going out and adventure. Go eat the local food instead of sticking to international restaurants. Go learn the local language. Go perhaps paint traditionally instead of sticking to your school's art room. Engage with students from the local per community, perhaps by joining a sports club. This enrich enriches us by learning more about our host culture, yet also provides our local peers with an opportunity to have an international interaction. Finally, well, how do you do all of this? These are three attributes of international living. Firstly, resilience. When trying to complete a local palette, it could get challenging. But that's okay, because just being international by itself is already challenging. But you're going to have to keep trying and trying and trying. But that's when you learn to be resourceful and find different ways to succeed. Finally, respect. This is what Mr. Emmerich had to say about the topic. Respect is something you display on an almost daily basis because you are working with so many people from different backgrounds. You are well aware of how things work in other countries, and that gives you a certain respect for how other people think about certain things. We can use these three attributes anywhere we go, whether it's when we want to branch out of our international neighborhood, jump out opportunities, or just generally improving our friend groups. In conclusion, yes, globalization is a difficult topic, but it's a demonstration of adaptation, acceptance to change, and the ability to show off your, your, your unique difference to the world. Yeah, speaking of differences, international schools do present a, an array of differences for you to portray to the world. However, I am 1,000% sure that you, yes, you yourself, 
have more to offer. The combination of global and local, if used properly and at the right times, has the capability to change your friend group, your job application, your community, and eventually, your world. Although we are comfortable, although we are privileged, we cannot get comfortable. We need to keep learning. As Muhammad Ali once said, the man who views the world at 50, the same as he did at 20, has wasted 30 years of his life. Thank you very much.